This is the second episode in a video series about Samuel Wood Gaylor, whose work is the subject of an exhibition, Let's Have a Ball, Wood Gaylor and the New York Art Scene, 1913 to 1936. I'm Alice Boone, Curator of Education and Public Programs at the Fleming Museum of Art. And I'm Andrea Rosen, the Curator. We have so many fun details to look at in this episode as we become spectators to the famed art balls that Gaylor painted in fantastic detail. Everywhere you look in these paintings, there's another eye-catching costume or strange prop to find. In her research on Gaylor's life and work, Andrea found archives from these events so that we can see the ways that Gaylor both documented but also embellished the legends of the penguin and the arts balls in these paintings. There's so much to look at in Arts Ball 1918. It's dizzying. It's definitely one of Gaylor's most elaborate paintings and it depicts this event and all of the strange characters that populate it. The performers dressed as clowns and medieval knights and riding these hobby horses around the scene. The costumed guests, they were required to be in costume. They wouldn't get let in by the clown jury that manned the door otherwise. And this band on a stage under a proscenium arch with these murals of nude figures above. In episode one, we talked about Gaylor's use of flatness to create a theatrical scene. And the proscenium creates such a scene in this painting. But there's also a kind of playful trickiness with the flat style of the murals that he's painted onto the proscenium. Yes, it always takes me a minute to figure out when I look at his paintings what is mural and what are actual figures populating the scene. Because Gaylor's style is so flat, sometimes it's hard to tell. And he himself had been a mural painter. He participated in a group called the Cooperative Mural Workshops that worked to put modern art murals into public spaces. In your archival research, you found records and bits of uh, memorabilia from these arts balls. What do you learn from finding these reference points? Yes, the Archives of American Art at the Smithsonian is full of invitations and letters pertaining to the Penguins events. So from those we get details like the exact date of this event and the venue, which is called the Palm Garden. We also see these amazing photographs of the Penguins participating in the arts balls and at work preparing for them. So in one photo we see Wood Gaylor and fellow Penguins in their clown makeup, riding those hobby horses ready to go. And in another photo we see one of the Penguins, Charles Ferrand, building the hobby horses to prepare for the ball. These hobby horses are such a great example of the intertextuality of Gaylor's paintings. Yes, I love it when a detail from one painting pops up in another one. So in the painting Bob's Party Number no. 1, which depicts a kind of risque private party that the penguins are throwing at their headquarters, we see the hobby horses being stored on a high shelf in the background. And they store them because they reuse them for other things. So we know that they marched out on their hobby horses to celebrate the armistice at the end of World War I. And that also, as they worked with the Red Cross um, on a fundraising parade and these posters that they created, they rode out for um, uh, they rode out for that parade in, in the horses as well. And you can see them making those posters in the painting of that name. How can these archives help us learn more about what it was like to be at an arts ball? Well, one critic described an arts ball as being a kaleidoscopic experience. And I think Peng uh, Gaylor's paintings themselves really capture that sense. So another great example is Arts Ball 1921, another big grand room populated with figures in wacky costumes, uh, the dancers and the mural and arch, and then this bird figure at the center. I have to know the story of this bird. So we know from a photograph, we, we have seen a photograph of that bird costume, which was paper mache. And we actually have the script for the sketch that they were performing, which was called 
the goo goo bird or an interrupted incubation. And the, the script for the sketch describes what's happening, that the bird lays an egg, which is actually a rugby ball painted white, and this football team mistakes it for their ball and runs it all over the place before the bird comes back to chase them off. What was it like to piece together these reference points from the paintings to the archives? It was thrilling. It was like being a detective to find that perfect anecdote or photograph or invitation that suddenly illuminates what's going on in Gaylor's fantastical paintings. Another source for that was his own memoir, which he dictated in the 1950s. So it's many years after the fact. He doesn't remember everything perfectly, even though he's trying to present himself as a straightforward recorder of the events that took place in the art world. So tell us about a moment when one of those gaps between memoir and painting intrigued you. Going back to Bob's party number one, Gaylor remembers the, the sketch at the heart of this party uh, being um, two of the artists, one as the sultan and the other as the sultan's wife, and they're picking out girls for the sultan's harem. But in the painting, it's actually two male figures. And uh, so um, another artist helps illuminate this, that it, he saw it as the sultan and the sultan's court chamberlain. So even though Gaylor is presenting himself as this straightforward recorder of these events, it's really not so straightforward at all, is it? No, and since the paintings themselves are sometimes painted years after the events they depict, we certainly can't take them as a precise documentation of what happened, but rather Gaylor's own fantasy of what happened, his embellishment of what happened, and his effort to create and celebrate the legend of these events and what the penguin, what the penguin accomplished. Um, so another example of that is, is going back to posters. And this shows us, once again, the way Gaylor's own style helps create that, that dizzying effect of, of fantasy. Uh, within posters, like, like the title indicates, they're creating all these posters within these frames and then the artists get lost within the images and there's more doorways and more frames and it really confuses your sense of space. And to add to that, Gaylor, from a, from a note in the archive, uh, we believe that Gaylor depicts himself in this painting, but he depicts himself twice. <laughs> uh, once in sort of the center, pouncing the outline of a poster and again at the bottom left, helping to stretch a canvas. And so you know, there again, you have to take the images themselves um, with a grain of salt, not, a, not as a recording of what happened, but of, of Gaylor's fantasy of what happened. 